How's it going everyone? I am here with my WWE Fastlane 2015 pay-per-view review. Fastlane just ended not too long ago. And you know, Fastlane, in typical WWE fashion, if something has potential, it will not be, uh, you know, it won't get to there, it won't succeed, or won't it reach its full potential. And that's what happened here. You know, Fastlane, like I said in my predictions video, I thought this, you know, could potentially be a very good pay-per-view. And when it was all said and done, it was not that good of a pay-per-view. You know, I'm not saying it was bad, but... Definitely wasn't good by any means. You know, the best way I can describe this pay-per-view as is it was a roller coaster. You know, there was really good stuff, and then there was really bad stuff. Then there was good stuff, then bad stuff. It was just, it was going, it was inconsistent. It was going up and down, and, like, there'd be something really good, then there'd be something really bad. Um, it just, it was a roller coaster pay-per-view. Um, you can sit and watch it, but, you know, the crowd really didn't help the pay-per-view either. I think the, the crowd was better. I think it would have helped the pay-per-view more out, because, you know, when you're, the crowd adds to a match, you know, regardless of which people want to say. But it adds to the match, and it could have added to whatever was happening. And the, the fact that the crowd really wasn't that into the show, it didn't really help the show either. So it kind of damaged the show. But uh, it was it was decent. It was a decent show. I'll just say that. Um, but before the pay-per-view started, of course, with the kickoff show that had the uh, Miz TV segment with Paul Heyman, which was actually really good. Um, Miz is actually... Great in the segment too, you know. This is probably one of the best things Miz has done. He was actually really good with Heyman. Uh, then again, he's with Heyman, you know. It's kind of hard not to be good with him. But Heyman basically just, you know, compared Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, basically saying it doesn't matter who wins. Uh, they're both either way. Someone's gonna lose to Brock Lesnar, and uh, he put both of them over. But he put Roman, Roman Reigns even more over because you know, got to make Roman look strong. So that was actually a really good segment. I was surprised how you know well it was. But we, we opened up with the pay per view with the six man tag team match: uh, Dolph Ziggler, like Ryback, and Eric Rowan. Excuse me. Versus uh, Seth Rollins, Kane, and Big Show. Very boring at first match. Uh, for some godforsaken reason, majority of this match it was Big Show and Eric Rowan in the match. For I don't know why, but they took a majority of the match. But when Ryback and Dolph Ziggler got in the ring, uh, they definitely fired up. You know, especially the big guy. The big guy really went off. So did Dolph Ziggler. They finally got in the ring. Uh, the exchange between Ryback and uh, Seth Rollins was actually really good, uh, especially that beautiful shell shot counter that uh, Roll uh, that Ryback gave Rollins. That was fantastic, and you know Ziggler went full force in the match as well. But uh, ending came, you know, distraction came. You know, J and J got involved in everything, and uh, you know, uh, Big Show with the KO punch on Dolph Ziggler, followed by a choke slam by Kane for the one, two, three victory. So the Authority wins, which I wasn't expecting, but honestly, it came to no surprise that they won. Uh, you know. Whenever you have a stable full of, uh, you know, veterans and, uh, you know, one star over a group of stars, of course, uh, the veterans got to win because you can't put talent over. That's just how it is. I'm just joking. But uh, it wasn't surprising that the Authority won. After the match, of course, the Authority tried to take him out. They tried to take Ryback Ziggler and Rowan out. But out and be out came and behold Randy Orton. Randy Orton finally makes his return, takes out the Authority, as well as Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, the cameraman followed Rollins all the way to the parking lot. I was kind of surprised how far they followed him. But uh, Orton came back about time. You know, everyone's pretty much been anticipating this for the last three months. Uh, every pay-per-view that's been guessed is going to be back to Survivor Series, TLC, Royal Rumble. And he finally came back tonight. Really glad. I'm really hyped, though, because I'm assuming it'll be Orton versus Rollins at, uh, at WrestleMania. So I'm really excited for that. It's definitely going to be a show stealer. Um, so I'm excited. So Orton's finally back, continuing his feud with Seth Rollins, and I couldn't be more happier. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be a fun ride with those two. And then we go on to the match of the evening, which was Gold Dust versus Stardust. Now, this match was incredibly boring. Incredibly boring. And it went way longer than it should have. Um, just, uh, I didn't like it. Um, I understood the story they were telling in the match, but the story was not interesting by any means. I did not like it. I was not into the match at all. I just, I, I, I wanted to snooze away. I didn't like it at all, like I said. Um, and the, the, the finish was even more horrible than the match. You know, the, I think Goldust pinned him with a crucifix pin, and the referee completely fucks it up. The referee goes, one, two, that's it, ring the bell. He doesn't, he doesn't even count the three. So it, it confused everyone, like, wait, why is he ringing for the bell? He didn't even count the three. So it caused confusion. Uh, Goldust wins, which I thought was stupid. Uh, I understood why. But at the same time, you want to make Stardust look good. You should have had him win this match. But yeah, the match is just lame. And the aftermath, though, was good, great, however, because backstage is Dusty and Goldust. Stardust attacked Goldust, and he actually cut a great promo. A great promo. Probably one of the best he's ever done. Not just as Stardust, but like his entire career as Cody Rhodes and Stardust. It's probably his best promo he's ever done. It was very well done, and I really felt like he meant what he was saying, too, so it was very well done. Uh, good job by uh, Stardust there. Well, the match sucked, but great segment. 
Uh, then we go on to the WWE Tag Team Championship match. The Usos versus Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Uh, this is actually a really good match. You know, it started out slow. You couldn't really get into it. But I'd say the last half of the match really picked up and he started really going. Get going, you know, with the false finishes. And, you know, everyone just beating the hole out of each other. You know, brawls. It really started getting going. I started really enjoying this match. And it got really good, you know. Uh, they got to the point where everyone was pinning. You know, like, you didn't know who was going to win. You know, the Usos were hitting their finishers. Uh, you know, they're getting some small packages and everything. Uh, it was just, it was a lot of fun. The last, like I said, the last half was a lot of fun. Um, and surprisingly, to a, a big surprise, at least to me, uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd pull off the win to become the new tag team champions. Uh, Kidd pinned, I think it was Jimmy. One of the Usos, I didn't really see who. Uh, but Tyson Kidd pinned one of the Usos with the uh, neckbreaker for the 1, 2, 3. So Kidd and Cesaro are your new tag team champions. Very unexpected. I didn't honestly didn't expect it. I'm very happy that they're tag team champions because they definitely deserve it. But honestly, just I didn't see them winning the match and winning the tag team title. So I'm really glad they're tag team champions. Like I said, the Usos, I'm not really too fond of them as tag team champions right now. I just because you know they had a long run and you know they're just they're they're as soon as a tag team division. So I, I you know quickly can get tired of them. And um, as I was the Usos, especially when they won the tag, tag team titles back from Miz and Miz Dow, just like uh oh, here we go again. But Thankfully, this is our own killer tag team champion, so good tag team match there, very, very solid. Then we go on to the Triple H and Sting face-to-face -face confrontation. Triple H comes out, pretty much just calls Sting out. Sting comes out, Triple H lays it down, you know, he says, Hey Sting, if you, if you walk away now, I will give you all what you want. I'll put you in the Hall of Fame, I'll make you the most relevant you've ever been, I'll give you DVDs, I'll give you, you know, network. Uh, more footage of you on the network, I'll get you merch, I'll make you the biggest name possible. And Sting pretty much put it down, Triple H says, no, I'll, I'll do things myself. And then Triple H and Sting have a brawl, Triple H goes out of the ring, gets the sledgehammer, goes in the ring, and all of a sudden Sting has the bat. Sledgehammer versus bat, Sting backs from the corner, Triple H pans, he's out, he's scared out of his, you know, he's scared out of his pants. Sting points the bat at him, points at the rest of the main sign, and pretty much tells Triple H, I want you on Mania. This is what's going to happen. Triple H agrees to it. Uh, Triple H tries to attack him. Sting lays him out with a scorpion death drop. And there we have it. WrestleMania 31. Sting versus Triple H. It's going down. Sting's first ever match in a WWE ring. And I'm excited. You know, especially since I'm going to be at WrestleMania, my very first WrestleMania. I'm excited to see Sting there. His very first match. And it's it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to the match. I think it's going to be awesome. And I'm just, I'm really excited for it. I just, I honestly can't wait to see it. So, awesome segment there too. Uh, just awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, next, we go on to the Divas Championship, or as Lillian likes to say, the Women's Championship, because Lillian fucked up a lot tonight for whatever reason. Um, well, she sucks anyways, but she really fucked up tonight. I don't know if she was drunk or what. But um, Nikki Bella versus Paige, matches whatever, you know, uh, Nikki Bella retained with a roll-up. That's all really needs to be said. Not much not much happened here, but nothing, you know, yeah, it was good, but nothing really, well, for Diva standards, it was good, but... Not, not 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 much to it besides that. Um, and you know, Paige French to the fit that you know she grabbed my tights. Shut up, you fucking lost. Just shut up. But yeah, Nikki Bella and Paige is whatever. No, no, nothing really worthy of talking about there. Uh, then we're going to the Intercontinental Championship match. Bad News Bears versus Dean Ambrose. Uh, match was good, but it's just the ending was so stupid. This pay per view. When I think people will look back on it. It'll be notorious of just how horrible the finishes were on this pay per view. There were a lot of horrible finishes, but um. This was, it was good, you know, it was like, you know, pretty much what you would expect from a TV match. Uh, Barrett tried running out with the Intercontinental title, you know, Ambrose stopped him, threw him back in the ring, you know, kept trying to run. And I got to the point where Ambrose was like, no, I'm fucking tired of this shit. And like, Ambrose was beating holy hell out of him. And uh, the referee called for the DQ, you know, Ambrose got DQ'd, Barrett retained, uh, Ambrose took the Intercontinental title and walked off with it. So I guess um, they're going to continue this, obviously. Um, I guess Barrett, or Ambrose is going to hold the title hostage until he gets a rematch for it, I'm, I'm assuming. Or maybe hold it to WrestleMania where they're going to have a rematch and that's where Ambrose wins it. I don't know what they're going to do, but obviously it's going to be some kind of, I would guess, maybe like even a steel cage match for the title, to be perfectly honest. Because, you know, they really emphasize that Barrett was trying to run from him. So I think they'll definitely have a match where, you know, Barrett can't run, whether it's like a steel cage or a lumberjack or some kind of match. They'll have him contained so he can't, even a strat match. I wouldn't surprise me if they pulled that out of their ass. But... I definitely think either on Raw or maybe even WrestleMania, they'll say that to WrestleMania, uh, they'll have some kind of, uh, you know, match for the title again. So, um, this is pretty much just to elevate the feud to go further. So, nothing really spectacular here besides Ambrose is awesome. Barrett's awesome too, but Ambrose is more awesome. And then we go on to what everyone was assuming was the return of The Undertaker. Yes, The Undertaker's droid music hits. His music hits. A casket comes out, but when the casket opens, so is it? Bray 
Wyatt. And then he pretty much just sits there and he challenges The Undertaker for WrestleMania. And I don't think, I, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm very vocal about my, my voice and my opinions on Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. I'm very vocal about it. And I truly believe that match will fucking suck. It'll be terrible. Uh, not saying that I think it for sure it will be. You know, it, I could very well be mind blown. It could be a good match. It could surprise me. But on paper, I honestly think this match will, is going to suck. And I think this will probably be the piss break for WrestleMania. I'm just being brutally honest. Like I said, when the match happens, I could easily be changed. My mind could easily be changed. It could, you know, definitely surprise me. But as of right now, I just I have no interest in the match. I think it's stupid that it's even happening, and it doesn't make any sense in the world. Why is Undertaker coming back for Bray Wyatt? It doesn't make any sense. I just I I don't agree with it, and I it, there's no reason behind it, and it doesn't do any guys any favors. So I'm not I'm not for it. So uh, if you disagree with me, you know, like most people probably do, I I, I apologize, but that's just my views on it. I just I don't care to see it, and I don't care for the feud. But yeah, that's that's my little voice on a little rant on that. And then we go into the two awesome matches of the show, which first off was the United States Championship match, Rusev versus John Cena. Awesome match here. They definitely put on a great match. Um, I knew they would put on a great match, and they did, and I was really happy with it. I was really satisfied with it. I thought, you know, they made both guys look good. You know, they're both pulling up moves. You don't really see them do that often. Um, and, you know, they're kicking out of each other's finishers. They're breaking out of each other's submission holds. You know, Cena powered out of the Accolade. Uh, Rusev powered out of a cross face. Yes, a cross face. I think Cena had the SDF applied when we got to the rope. So I think they both men looked really good. I thought they did a great job, both men, and they put on a very solid match here. Um, the one complaint was John Cena was being loud as hell. I felt like if I was in my room, I could imitate the match. I could imitate I was wrestling an invisible John Cena because John Cena was that loud with his spot calling. But um, awesome match here. Uh, just beating the whole out of each other. Ending comes, Rusev locks in the accolade. John Cena's in it in like... He's in it like, I don't know what the hell, it's like, Cena's arms are like behind his shoulder blades. He's like in a freaking accolade where it's like, it's, it looks impossible to even get out of. And Cena passes out. Cena passes out. Rusev retains the United States Championship. I should hold on, let me retract a little bit. Uh, what, caught, what ended up when this happened, or what caused this was, uh, of course, you know, Cena had him in the AA. Lana got in the ring. Ref was getting around. Then Rusev, you know, gave him a low blow. Followed by a super kick, which led into the accolade, which John Cena passed out to. So, I thought it was a clever finish. I thought it made Rusev look good because he made Cena pass out. And he didn't, you know, I'd have to pin Cena. He made him, uh, you know, pass Cena out, which I don't think anyone does these days or anyone can do. So, the fact that he made Cena pass out was a big deal. I definitely think it will lead to a rematch. You know, Cena was, you know, distracted. He got low blowed. And, you know, he never, he can use his never give up. He never gave up. He never tapped out. He never got pinned. He passed out. It wasn't, you know, in his control. He just, his body couldn't take it. And I think they could use that uh, to make a rematch of WrestleMania, which, you know, where Cena, of course, would win. But um, I thought it was very solid stuff here. Uh, can't wait for the Mania match because I'm pretty sure they have a Mania match, which will, will I think, might even surpass this match. You know, I think it'll be better. Um, I'm not saying this match is bad. Like I said, it was a really good match, but I think they, they, they could do better, especially the Grand Stage WrestleMania. Definitely do a better match. But great stuff here. Rusev retains. Rusev looks awesome. And then we're going to the main events, which was the number one contenders match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 31. Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan. This match was fucking brutal. Jesus Christ. Like I said, Daniel Bryan's infamous for getting people's best match ever, and that's what Daniel Bryan did. He gave Roman Reigns his best match ever. And this was, it honestly was brutal. To the kicks, to the fucking forearms, to the, the punches... To the knees, it was brutal. It was just them beating the whole out of each other. That's what I loved about it. it was just them just full force beating the whole out of each other, hell of each other, you know, spearing each other, flying knees, uh, submission holds. Uh, just awesome match. It honestly was an awesome match, and it was very brutal. That's what I liked about it. Uh, the brutality has really added, you know, the, it's, you can legitimately tell they were laying it in, which was just, it adds so much when you can just, you know they're legitimately trying to beat the hell out of each other. That's what they did there, and it was awesome. And then the ending happened, which I, everyone knew, but it just it was one of those things where I'm not going to believe it till it happened, and it happened where Dan Bryan was going for the running knee for a second time. He hit it one time, you know, Roman Reigns kicked out. He's going for a second time, and then Roman Reigns countered into the spear, which was the one, two, three pinfall in which Roman Reigns beats Daniel Bryan and now goes to WrestleMania to face Brock Lesnar for the WWE World League Championship. And after the match, you know, it, it seemed Brown was pissed off, but Bryan pretty much told him, like, hey, 
you better fucking beat him at WrestleMania now that you beat me. You better beat Brock Lesnar, because I was going to be the guy to do it, but you beat me. Therefore, you better fucking beat him. And he walks out. So, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, uh, main event, WrestleMania 31. I mean, after this match, I can give little hope for Roman Reigns that it can be a good match. Um, you know, I was really down. I just thought the match sounded horrible. But I know Roman Reigns was in the ring with Daniel Bryan in this match. And at WrestleMania, will be in the ring with Brock Lesnar. But if they can bring the brutality that was brought in this match, if Brock Lesnar can beat the holy hell out of each other, beat the holy hell out of him like Bryan was able to do, I think Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns could put on a very solid main event. You know, I'll, I'll give it a chance. I know I, I kind of contradict myself because I'm not giving Taker and Wyatt a chance, but I'm giving Brock and uh, Roman a chance. But I just think uh, that uh, they're in a better position to, I think I would like more than, you know, with Taker and Wyatt. They're not put in a position where I think it will be a good match where with Reigns and, you know, Lesnar. They, they're put in a position where I think it will be a solid match, especially since, they're, you know, Lesnar's the heel off that great, a phenomenal triple threat match, and now, you know, Reigns is off the heels of this great match with Brian. I'm looking forward to it. I can honestly say I'm looking forward to the match, and I think it'll be a good one. And uh, I, am I upset it's not a triple threat or it's not Lesnar versus Brian? Yeah, of course, but you know what? If for some miraculous reason, you know, Lesnar stays with WWE, um, I'm happy because then not give me hope for a Daniel Bryan Brock Lesnar match sometime down the future. May not may not be at a WrestleMania, but hey, as long as that match can happen one way or another, I'm, I'm all for it. But yeah, that'll do it for my fast lane review. I know I kind of rambled on uh, the last like five minutes or so about the whole WrestleMania, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan thing, Brock Lesnar. But um, you know, I just want to get my thoughts out there about the whole situation. But WrestleMania 31, you know, it's shaping up. I think it could, it could be a good one. You know, saying, I don't think it'll be one of the greatest, but you know, you have Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, like I said, could end up being a good match. Sting and Triple H should be good. You know, uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Randy Orton will be a show stealer for sure. So uh, I'm liking where it's looking so far. You know, Cena Rusev, so I think uh, it's a promising card. It's a, it could be a good show, and I'm looking forward to it. But I uh, thank you guys for watching this video, and until next time, I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys for tuning in for this video.